Well, you look gorgeous, and I couldn't wait to talk to you because Donnie and I watched the show, and we're like, we love Garcelle. We love her. And he's been a fan of yours for a very long time, Garcelle Bouvet. The Real Housewives of Beverly him. Hills, Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on Bravo. She's also joining The Real as a co-host on September 21st. Yay for you. That's <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. I'm super excited about it. What a great group of women to work with there, too. Agree. They're positive. They're uplifting. They're smart. They're dynamic. They're modern. I'm super excited. And it's okay to have difference of opinions, obviously. You were, you know. You I know. It's like, <laughs> it, it must be nice were. to work in a place where you can give an opinion <laughs> and not be attacked. Um, I you think know it's Sherry a good... Shepard is one of my good friends, right? Yeah. You know, you know that we love each other. We like we've know got that. That's we've got this special place in our hearts for each other because I feel like we've we fought together together yes, on the same did. team. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, well, congratulations on that. I'm very very excited for you, and we're all going to be tuning in because we're all a fan. Um, how has life changed for you since being on this show? Because you know, I picture the the newbies coming on, signing that contract, going, "Fucking God be with me. Here I go." Here I go. I'm I'm the queen of saging. I've been saging myself like <laughs> ridiculously. My kids are like, Mom, are you saging again? <laughs> I just bought a whole case, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's been really interesting. Like, I've never done reality, as you know. But what's interesting, I say to a friend of mine, I've done some really great things in my career. I've worked with some you have. incredible people. I have never gotten more attention than when the announcement of me being on Housewives. I mean, it was like everybody knows. It's unbelievable how the fans are so invested. And it's just, a, it's a lot sometimes. They're invested and it's exciting when they're on your team. When they're not, to me, that's some of the most difficult moments to get through. I mean, I've gone through, uh, you know, enough hell in my own career to know what it feels like. Yeah. But when you're thrusted into it, and th that impact is so big so quickly. How do you cope? Um, that's been the hardest part for me. I yeah. mean, it's one thing to shoot the show, but then again, when it airs and you see what the women are saying, but then, you know, social media, you know, the world weighs in. So that's been the hardest part because I think sometimes people see a little clip and they think they know all of you, you know, or they take a side and it's like, well, you don't really know where I was coming from with that. So that's been the hardest part. But I have to say, overall, the fans have been really great to me. Well, that's because thanks to you, because you you're authentic. You come across, you know, as a sweet, loving, compassionate to me person, especially when you, um, you know, you backed Denise, yeah. To me, that was like showing, you know what, this someone's getting attacked, whether you believe her or not, you still kind of stood by her to say, I'm going to be your wingman in this. Yeah, um, I mean, I think friendship is everything. And you don't throw a friendship away because there's a rumor about someone. I mean, you know, and that's that was my stance, you know, loyalty till the end. Right, right. And and do you feel now that uh, Denise Annette just announced that she's not coming back? What was your I'm sure you knew before her announcement. I but, let me just say I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised with the way things went. But, you know, she made it because of what we've seen on the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, this was a really hard season for her. And I think um you know, when you're being constantly talked about and I think it, you know, it could affect your marriage, it could affect your kids. I think that's where she was coming from. And it was like, just back off a little bit. Not every dinner needs to be about this. And I think right. she's just had enough. She had enough. Do you feel do you feel like um, because, you know, it's hard to gain that perspective in just being on one season, but do you feel like there's sometimes a a plan or a lot to focus a storyline on someone? Um, I don't know if there's a plan, but I believe she was warned prior to this season. Really? That, you know, yeah, that's what she says. And that's what, you know, I want to believe. And I actually, you know, Lisa Rinna was like, the second season is usually, you know, when things happen. And I said, is that a threat? And she said, yes. And I was like, take it. Oh, does, so it doesn't concern you at all. You're you're like oh, it bring it. Me. Absolutely, <laughs> of course. I'm still human, <laughs> but you have to have a poker face. 
totally. But you also, uh, you know, you were a single mom for a while, so I get it. I get it. Yeah. We've got some extra armor. Yes, we do, man. Yes, we do. We can multitask. We can, you know, bring in the bacon and cook it and fry it and take meetings. We can do it all. And I'm still doing that. I mean, that's my armor. That's my, those are my wings, if you will. Oh, I know that you had said, um, because of course I follow everything you do, um, that you might not come back if, she, if Denise doesn't come back. So now that she's not coming back, are you still into coming back for season, the next season? You know, it's really up to Bravo. I had fun. We'll see. You know, I talked to Andy when I've interviewed him a yeah. plethora of times and I'm like, I'm so interested about, I'm so interested in that room where it happens. And he started laughing. I'm like, cause I, we all picture it as an audience member of like, Oh, they have to go into their end of the year meeting and you know, whether they're going to get their contract renewed or not. How nerve wracking. What did he say? He said, he, he giggled at me. He's like, well, yeah, it's basically the room where it happens, but they don't go in um, last minute deciding. They kind of do their research. And to yeah. me, and don't quote me on this, but um, they get a feel, much like you've experienced with focus groups, yeah. um, of, of how someone comes across. I said, how can you tell if someone is a, a, a good character on the show when a lot of people have to fight when you have to bring it right. when you have to. So it's, bring it's a it. delicate, it's, you have to, it's like a delicate little dance you have to do. Do you feel that delicate dance? I do feel that delicate dance for them to have to figure out, you know what I mean? I mean, like I had fun on the show. I'm good either way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I don't know how they, how they decide. I mean, I think it's really based on, what the feedback has been with the fans, with the world and focus groups and stuff like that. But I think, you know, um, they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for so long. This is season 10, right? Right, right. So, so figure it out. And, and, we'll and you out. are, and you've got another job, so <laughs> you've got many I other jobs. Have a couple say. of jobs. <laughs> I'm Not saying, only yeah, I'm, real, but also my podcast. That's right. You want to plug your podcast? Go ahead. I would love it. And I want you and... Donnie to come on. Please. We would love it. It's called, it's called going to bed with Garcelle. And we oh my God, I love it. Everything, sex, relationships, sex. Did I say sex? A lot uh -huh. of sex. <laughs> well, guess what? So We'd love fun. to. And it's our favorite topic. So I love uh, that. And we'll bring it. We'll talk about our sex dungeon I made. Um, oh, yes. Uh, I know, I know. My my listeners are like, yeah, yeah, we heard about your fucking sex dungeon. Keep going with Garcelle. I'm talking to Garcelle. I want to hear more. <laughs> Garcelle Bouvet, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on Bravo. She's also joining The Real as a co-host on September 21st, so make sure you guys tune in to that. Um, I want to dive into a little bit more of this because it's what my listeners do love. We watch the show, so these are the sure, questions. Um, what about Kyle? Uh, there was... Um, Someone that on, on on social media had mentioned that, you know, that you didn't give Kyle a chance and Kyle somewhat kind of agreed in the response. Do you feel like you gave her a chance or did you go in side eyeing knowing she's going to no, be? A I gave everybody I gave everybody a chance. I just came in and gave, you know, was me. Right. And my thing with Kyle is when there was a, an important topic, when she called us all fake ass bitches, I was like, what have I done? Tell me. And she's like, no, I don't want to tell you. And I think that that's when it's important to hear for her to hear my voice. I felt like she did not hear my voice or care to hear what I was saying. So that's where I was coming from. I think she's well, funny. I think she's, you know, she was nice. My kids keep raving about her enchiladas that she gave them. <laughs> They're like, she has the best enchiladas. I'm like, shut up about the enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> You're I like, I'm not going to become, day. <laughs> I'm not going to become friends again just for the fucking food. Um, exactly. you guys, you guys did unfollow each other. This happens almost every season. Um, oh, does what, it? I didn't know that. Oh, it happens all the time. All the time. Oh, it the time. does? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I get I tell people. I follow people who I want to see thrive. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see their journey and I have to like you. Got it. So what would it take to have you follow her again? We need to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down and air out everything. Is there, is there a history besides this or is the, um, because she, someone had also said that you were using this as a storyline for your own 
purpose, which I, I, I don't agree with. This, I love this. I love that you're asking me this question because it's really important. I think we're all in this together in terms of the journey of the show. No one goes in going, this is going to be my storyline. This is going to be my storyline. I mean, if that were the case, then Kyle Dews, Denise has a storyline. Do you know what I mean? There's no, you don't plot out a storyline. You go and you hang out with people. You may like them. You may not like them. There might be a disagreement, but there's no such thing as I'm creating a storyline because we all go in it with a blank slate. So I'm told that's what I did. Right, right. right? I mean, it will, it will be, in, of course, and it'll be right. interesting to see as you continue on the show, if you still feel like that way in three years from now, because as a viewer, we look at like Lisa Vanderpump and it was like, oh my God, there was, was there some staging? Was there some setup? Or even with, with Rinna, with the Munchausen, right. someone else making her say that before. <laughs> <laughs> What made you giggle just about that? Spit out my wine. <laughs> or you just yes, remember how much Townsend thing was crazy. It um, was crazy. But yeah, I certainly didn't go. I've never done this show before, right? So the OGs know how it runs. So for me to say, oh, I'm going in using this as a storyline, I don't know what's going to develop, right? Right. So how would I know that? Do you, do you guys get producer notes? That's something I always meant to ask no, because we get them, you know, that on, on networks and studios, we get notes. Yeah. Do they give you guys notes? They don't really give us notes. They really just want us to be together every now and then they might say, oh, you should probably bring this up because, you know, someone's going to bring it up, you know, or someone's going to talk about it. Sometimes they go, this is the time to say how you really feel. That's really the notes we get. That's about it. All right. Well, that makes sense. So coming back next year, what, what do you see? Like, are you going to, uh, I guess you're just going to, it sounds like you're just going to remain open and let reality I'm be reality. Open. Yeah. I'm always open. I feel like, you know, that's how you should be. If you go in with a plan, a preconceived notion, then I think that's when you can get fake because then you got to, got to mold it. You got to move it to make it fit somewhere as opposed to just going in and seeing what happens. You know, I want to go back to the Denise thing, because again, I said, I like that you stepped up and was her wingman during that time. Did you at all feel a certain way as to whether Brandy was telling the truth or lying, or did you not even care to know the answer? Or was there a little voice? No, I really didn't care. I made my decision and I stuck with it. I really didn't care. Even when they said, do you want to see the text? I wasn't interested in seeing the text. I really wasn't. And uh, to me, my allegiance was to her as my friend. We've been friends for 20 something years. When I was going through my divorce, she helped me out. We, you know, had similar sort of like public divorces, if you will. And so that to me weighs more than some random, let me not say that, some chick <laughs> saying, uh, you know, something that who cares if she slept with Brandy and I? Who cares? Well, that's the one thing when I was watching, I'm like, oh my God, if I was Denise in that moment and they said that, I would have said, and so that's what we would have loved because then that would have shut it down or none shut of your down. business or as we do in improv. Yes. And that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I remember Madonna did that years ago for her sex book. They're like something, something about sex. She's like, and and it shut it down immediately. And I was like, oh, if Denise had that in that moment, but she, yeah. she looked like a scared little girl. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. Let me tell you, I'm a strong chick. I've been, you know, I've been around the block. I've, you know, been around for a long time. But when you're in that moment, you're sort of become a little girl because you feel like, oh, why are you hurting my feelings on purpose? Right. Like, why are you, you know, it's a, it's a weird place. I'm, and I realized that I... My little girl came out for me when I see it, when I watch it back, because I feel like I don't like this feeling, you know, because I'm usually around people that are positive and uplifting. And yeah, if you're not, then you're not part of my world. So it's a different thing to try to navigate that and yet still hang out and go to lunch and go shopping. And you know. totally. And that's another thing where that delicate dance comes in, you know, yeah. because sometimes it does feel like my parents are fighting where I get that same feeling of like, like I'm, I'm young and I can hear them fighting in the other room and that same kind of battling. I mean, it's easier to be separated watching it from TV, but you can still yeah. feel it. 
But imagine you can still in- feel it. Absolutely. And I think even like, you know, Erica is strong and she says it like it is, but at least you know how she feels and then she moves on. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yes. And I yes. love Dorit because Dorit is so fashionably fabulous. How are you feeling about Lisa Rinna these days? We got to work on that. <laughs> We have Did you? Work. I haven't checked if you guys are following each other on social media. Nope, 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 no, we're not. <laughs> Is it easy for you to sit down and have the conversations that need to be said to each other, or is it difficult? I prefer that, honestly, because then I think we can move on and everybody can clear the air, whether it's good or bad. I personally, as a grown up, prefer that prefer that. And have you reached out to her at all? Or has she reached out to you? No, I think we're probably going to wait and do it on camera. God, that's so wild, isn't it? (laughs) I mean, I guess you would get in trouble if you didn't do it in front of the camera. So I can understand why you'd have to, it's, but it's weird. It's like a, it's like a pause with a remote control on, on, you know, letting something go and moving on. I'd feel almost stunted in my spiritual growth. And I, exactly. And I didn't realize that we weren't allowed to have conversations without the cameras rolling. So in Rome, Denise would sneak into my hotel room and I'm looking down the hall either both ways to see if it's clear. And I'm like, I'm a grown ass woman. I'm a mother, you know, like three times over and I'm sneaking a friend into (laughs) my room. It was so ridiculous. That's so funny though. You're right. You're like, wait a minute. I'm not 13. I'm a grown ass woman. (laughs) What's going on? What about in terms of clear? (laughs) Come on over, Denise. What about the, the, um, the reunion? I mean, was the, is the reunion, you only have one time to speak of this, but it doesn't seem like a healing experience. No, it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be healing. It's supposed to be where you, you know, put everything out there. So I, I think there's no handbook. No one tells you anything when you show up. Right. No. So, um, but it gets really tense because as you're sharing your true feelings, other people can perceive it the wrong way. So it was, I think like 13 to 15 hours, one day remotely at home. And it took me two days to shake it. Honestly, two days. Wow. Wow. Out of sorts. I felt like it was really tough. I, I can't even imagine. And like, I give mad respect to any female that has the strength yeah to be able to step into that arena. Yeah, it really is. I mean, these women are brave and they've been doing it for so long and you got to give them kudos for being able to totally get out. They're all strong elves. Everything out there. Totally. They put everything out there, good and bad and however people take it and they continue to do it. So that's amazing. Resilient is a word I would use too. Resilient. Very good. You know, they're like, yeah. look at, look at Rena. She's been around for a hell of a long time also. Um, how are you dating right now? No, I'm single. Okay. This is where you and Donnie come in. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> this is where you guys come in. I need a fabulous guy. I like the New Yorker vibe, but I don't want him living in New York. Correct. I get that. I had to leave LA because I didn't want to date 60 year olds as a 40 year old. And when, but I wound up moving to Chicago, grabbing Donnie, we moved to the Midwest, but I understand that East coast, uh, energy swagger. Yeah. The swag that's they dress up. They care about what they wear. And it's not all about their six pack. Right. Right. Who cares about that? I want There's to some substance. I want to have some great sex. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you went seven years. Is it seven? Oh my God. Yes. I can't believe I actually said that. I did. I did. Listen to me. I did not see my divorce coming. It was literally the rug was pulled out from under me and you got to recover. You got to recoup. And I have, I had three, two, three, wait, two, three-year-olds. Oh my God. Two, three-year-olds. And my focus was healing not only quickly for them and for me, but also to be able to co-parent with their dad. Right. He wasn't going anywhere. And I couldn't hate the man that they love so much. Right. So I had to really work hard and that was my focus. And the last thing I wanted to do is have a penis in my vagina. You know what? I love you so much fucking more. I already loved you, but that I get, cause I went on a year also, I did a cock block and said, uh-uh. you and, did. I, 
I did. And it was one of the greatest, most self-empowering healing. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, you know, we th- just needing when you go into that space of I need. Right. It's, it's an energy that's not of a higher vibration. So you're like, OK, why do I need what am I not getting or giving to myself that I'm trying to get elsewhere? I can that's masturbate. Exactly right. So you so I can't use that. I can't use I need an orgasm when I can clearly do it myself. <laughs> And that's when I kind of went inward and did a lot of healing. And you're right. I was able to be a a better mom too and a better girlfriend. And I felt like I didn't have, uh, like with my older son, I felt like my ex-husband came into our our lives when my son Oliver was seven. And I felt like a lot of my focus went to my relationship. And so I also didn't want to repeat that. It was important that we had this strong foundation the boys knew that they were going to be okay. And it was about me like, oh, and then here's a new guy for you guys, you know? A hundred percent. That was a lot of it. Yeah, you know, that was a lot of it. And you know what? I'm still young. I'm still, you know, there's plenty of- Hot. Time. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but thank you, Jenny McCarthy. <laughs> You know, that's true because uh, when I was single for many, many years and dating, I would do a six month trial before you got to say hello to my son. Yeah. After six months, you kind of have a feeling whether this person's going to stick around a little longer or not. Yeah. And there's been okay. plenty that passed. I, I totally believe that. And I believe that for a very long time and still do. But I ran into, I don't know if you know Ellen Barkin, but she said to me at a party, at a party in uh, in New York that I think it was the benefit was hey for Haiti. So there's a lot of big people there. And she was saying, are you dating? And I said, no, I really don't want to introduce my boys to anybody. And she said, you also have to let your kids know that you're lovable. And I was like, oh, well, like they need to see that someone loves mom too. And right. you know, I used to That's buy true. my own Christmas presents and put them under the tree and say, Santa remembered mom. And I'd get, oh. you know, whatever I wanted. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is Santa. really smart. But I wanted them to see that it wasn't just them that, but when she said that, I thought, you know, I do that with gifts. I guess in a way it is important for them to see, you know, someone love me or I had a friend, we all went to the movies, a male friend, and he was strictly a friend, still is. And he opened the door for me to get in the car. We were all going to go to the movies. And I thought my kids never saw anybody open the door for me. Oh, Like wow. things that you want boys to learn and see and see me not just as a mom, but see me as someone that, you know. Totally. That was, yeah. It's, it's but, like being that and, and being a role model, like my um, therapist, our therapist, when Donnie and I started dating said, you know, this is actually when we just first got married. I said, let's go into therapy now before we have problems. Let's let's learn some ways of communication and just lay out the groundwork so we know what to do when shit hits the fan. Yeah. And one of the things the therapist had said was, you know, don't be afraid to be affectionate in front of each other because we have, I have a stepson, Donnie's yeah. stepson is my son and they, you know, might still want us with, I'm sure like any kid want you the original back. Right. So as a person in that new relationship, you're kind of like, well, I don't want to just kiss or get huggy in front of them right. to piss off the kids. But the therapist right. said the opposite. They need to see how love is modeled, a healthy, uh, loving relationship. And I was like, Oh, that makes sense. Doesn't it? Isn't that? Yes. Yeah. It is amazing. It's a aha yeah. uh-huh moment. Um, I know I only have a few minutes left with you, but um, I want to ask about your Instagram post. What does that mean? Plot twist. <laughs> I need to know. Oh, you'll what have to wait and see. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? <laughs> yeah. You'll have to wait and see. How long do we have to wait? <laughs> Not long. <laughs> Not long. Not long. Not long. It's just, you know, I, you know. I know. I look at me. I'm like, hmm. It's hmm? all in good fun. <laughs> Let's get back to going to bed with Garcelle. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we? Going to bed with Garcelle is her podcast. Um, how far do you push the limits in it? Do you talk about like if oh, there's other boundaries or not? Whatever. No. I mean, it's always a celebrity and a, and a girlfriend because I didn't want it skewed one way. And we've had couples. We had Jerry O'Connell and we had uh, and Rebecca. Rebecca. Oh, my God. They were so much fun. But we really just talk about what you like, what you don't like. It's just a really fun conversation. No holes barred, whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, it's just pure fun. 
And are you pure fun? Is everybody in bed or just, no, no, no. Well, everybody's in their own bed, probably. No, (laughs) we just call it that, but everybody, you know, we do the zoom. So we also use that as, um, you know, video for, you know, social media, but it's, uh, it's just, you know, podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. I absolutely love this. And I can't wait for Donnie and I come on and blow your you minds. Yes, with amazing sure. Knowledge and naughtiness. <laughs> How long has it been for you guys now? Um, I, we just had our six year anniversary. So. Oh, that's so cool. I know. You can see the love when you guys are together. I just, like I when do, I, I just... see you interviews and stuff like that, I see it. Right. Cause we, we just really love each other, but yeah. it, it doesn't come without work. Like we'll talk about it on your podcast, like the work that we have done, a lot of healing, a lot of, you know, growing, I growing together. That. No, that. you're honest about it. That's really cool. Well, if it'll help someone, I'll sell my soul. If it helps somebody, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an open book. Here you go. You need to see my I love that about you. Here it is. You're Real human. house of you're human. Exactly. Beverly Hills, Wednesday nights, nine o'clock on Bravo. Don't forget to check out her amazing podcast, Going to Bed with Garcelle, who she's going to have myself and Donnie Wahlberg on very soon. And The Real, co-hosting on September 21st. Congratulations on that and everything. And we will work on a man for you, even though you need nothing. You are loved. (laughs) Thank you. Love to you and Donnie. And uh, thank you for having me on. Of course. I'll be talking to you soon on yours. Okay, perfect. Bye, Bye, love. Thank you. Bye, hun.